I really do believe that we are fortunate enough in our civilization to be reaping the harvest of the kingdom of God. The seeds sown by our forebears. Those seeds of purpose, meaning, and love. It gives us direction. It energizes our civilization. Unfortunately, not everybody receives such a wonderful planting. I heard a story this week about a young man who, instead of receiving a seeding of purpose, meaning, and love, received a seeding of malevolence, violence, and hatred. And as if to provide fertilizer for this planting, he also received a furrow plowed right down his face, a scar from an assailant. So he could look in the mirror every day, see that scar, and burn with anger and the want of revenge. No wonder he found himself in prison. But at least he had hope. He had heard that his assailant had been sentenced to prison. And he was just hoping that that guy got put in his prison. Then he had set things right. Now down south, we'd say that guy needs a come to Jesus moment. Come to Jesus. You know, get that anger taken care of. Wipe it out. And down there, I can remember growing up, and one of the things we used to do that make you severely uncomfortable, we'd just start having witness. When was your come to Jesus moment? When was yours? And we'd all get up and share our come to Jesus moment. Very perplexing time for me, because I really couldn't put my finger on one exact moment that I had that come to Jesus experience where all my sins were washed away and I had left behind a life of decadence and had entered in upon the new life of Jesus Christ and His love for me. See, sometimes the planting of the kingdom takes time for the fruit to grow. One of the things about prison, and I've never been in prison but I have visited prisons, visited people there. It is horribly boring. Just absolutely boring. So no wonder a lot of the prisoners will take the opportunity when it's presented to them of going to class. And they can even get credit sometimes for class. You know, I can't understand our penal system. They started shutting things like that down. But that's rehabilitation. This friend of mine who's a pastor uh, in a Methodist church, he was teaching a class on Christianity at the prison. And that angry guy was in that class. That's how I heard about him. And he went up to him at the end of the year. He says, you know, just heard through the prison grapevine, the guy who did this to me, he's being moved here. Says, but I don't want to do anything. I've heard something over this year. And what he heard was purpose. What he heard was meaning. What he heard was love. Which completely overrode the malevolence, the violence, and the hatred. Over that year, the kingdom had been sowed in him and had come to fruit. We heard a couple of lessons here besides the gospel. You know about Samuel going up and choosing the next king of Israel. Oh, it has to be this guy. He's really something. Look at him. Nope, not him. Not him. Not him. Going down the checklist. Well, surely he couldn't mean that young runt, David. He's out there watching the sheep. Yep, that's him. And then we hear in Corinthians, I make all things new. That man still has a furrow in his face. And perhaps now that has new meaning for him. 
Maybe that marks the ending of one life and the beginning of a new life. Maybe he arose to the realization that God chooses broken people just like him. And don't you know, God chooses you too.